My name is Vincent Harding, no. and I live in Denver, Colorado, in the USA. And I am here with a group of other Americans visiting the Palestinian community and their Israeli allies. So we've come because these folks here are doing what we have been trying to do, continue to try to do in our country. Yes, it is not about an old thing of the 60s. It is about a continuing non-violent struggle to transform our country into a truly human society. They are trying to do the same thing. That is why we come to San you will come and it's very important for us and we believe in this way and we believe in this uh, type of resistance freedom, freedom. Oh, well, I'm singing and praying with my mind. my mind it was saved on freedom hallelujah 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 Welcome in Palestine, welcome in Nabi Saleh. We highly appreciate your visiting and your attention of our issue. This is very important for us to see you here, to see the reality and to, to be our messenger for our issue in your country. This is very important for us to see you here, coming to support us to, to and become our partner. And we are here believing in our issue, believing in our way of resistance, because we uh, learn a lot of your struggle in your country. We believe that our destiny is to resist and not to accept occupation. We highly appreciate your visiting to us. Thank you for coming and welcome. This region, we are around 25,000 residents in these five villages. We have just, in our village, seven hour weekly supplied water. The settlement take uh, 24 hour daily. For that, you see a lot of tanks on the roof of our home. During the demonstration, they began to shoot to the tanks with the skunk water. Everyone in the world know now who is the victim of the occupation. We haven't uh, any uh, weapon to, to protect us, and we face a lot of uh, Israelis, the, the, the five power in the, in, the, in the world die, and they have nuclear weapons. And what we can do, and what we can, uh, we just want our rights, and we want to end the occupation. Free, free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! We are against the occupation because the occupation harm everyone uh, uh, life in the world. Uh, we see the Israeli occupation is the greenhouse for planting the terrorists and the violence around the world. And we believe that the women is very important for this type of resistance because of the women is half of our society and it's very important for us to convince our women to participate. In the first uh, demonstration, I uh, injured in my uh, leg and uh, my uh, daughter, she's in, uh, injured in, his, in her hand. My husband, uh, in, they arrested him one year. One year I'd be alone. Rubber bullet. Just my life. It's, 
uh, very difficult to live, uh, live alone without husband, without your son. that if you keep silent nobody will hear you nobody will help you uh, and we will uh, we will not take a lesson from Martin Luther King and from Mahatma Gandhi and from uh, famous uh, stragglers in, in the history so uh, we uh, wanted uh, to struggle we decided to struggle and to struggle we decide that to struggle is not mean to kill to struggle is mean to collect a pressure and to put on the occupation with all the activities don't aim to kill. That's the meaning of our nonviolence. In struggle, we can use any tools except killing and except armed resistance against the Israeli occupation. We uh, wanted uh, to uh, convince all the people around the world that we aren't killers. We are in terrorists, we are justice regulars against the occupation. We have uh, a right to grow our children, hopefully, peacefully, freely uh, in our uh, homeland. And uh, we aren't against the Israelis, we aren't against the Jews, but we are against the occupation. And we will never keep silent against the occupation. Security do not know about this trip. He's been getting all these emails and, you know, Palestinian all over the place. No, 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 I don't mean exactly they do. Oh, no, no, no. Arabi Palestinian Musadara from the Jewish Ehtilal Israeli. Arabi Muhtalli. Arabi Muhtalli, in the year 48. Yes. He was in the Arabi Muhtalli and was in the Arabi. أي واحد بكون من الاقتراب من هذا الشيك بكون بإطلاق النار عليه حجة إنه اقترب من السياج الفاصل العنصري.
I realized um, also a special meaning in an observation made by Paul Robeson. Uh, many of you have heard the name of this very famous African-American singer, Paul Robeson. He said, if we learn to sing each other's songs, we will then learn to be together. If we learn to sing each other's songs, we will learn to be with each other, to be together. In the heart and now. Yes. Allah. Don't ye ji tal andi. Uh huh. Ehna and Allah. Ehna and Ruh and Allah. Then to perform the show, Kasa. Ah, let me perform the show. So Allah is in the heart. Yes. Who bet you be Kalbu in my new heart? Ah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Tal il Allah. My heart. Tal andi Allah. Tal andi Allah. Tal andi. Tal Andi Allah Tal Andi Continue, continue Allah Tal Andi Tal Andi Allah Tal Andi So Hamas is a branch, actually a branch of the Muslim Brothers and to be honest Hamas has been created, I'm sorry to say that, but this is maybe part of the fact, Hamas was encouraged to be found by the Israeli intelligence. It's danger one. So they, sh they shoot it yeah, by the gun, direct to the people. Mm. So the, we have many people was hit by this one, in the head or in the eyes or in uh, in the chest. So it's very dangerous. Please don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. Yeah. Don't touch. So for example, this kind of tear gas, they throw it by the gun and by hands. So it's make a lot of gas around. And it's very, very strong. And also this one made in the United States. This is just for confiscated more land, to build more settlements, to put the Palestinian in jail, to uh, have it transfer the Palestinian uh, from their land. So this is the Israeli's goal. But our goal, yeah. our goal, yeah. to get rid of this war, to have the peace, and to have the freedom. Yes. And why, how we do it, by uh, help of our uh, friends from all of the world. So do you actually use that the language? We want this wall to come down. Yes. Do you demand that? Okay. How, how many ways do you demand it? We have many ways with our friends from everywhere yeah. to send our message to everywhere in the world. We are yeah. not against the Jewish. Yeah. We are against the occupation. Of course. One, two, three, four, incubation number, five, six, seven, eight, Israel is the system. The bullet, the rubber, you know the rubber. The rubber, it's uh, nothing. But here is the rubber. Oh, that's hard. This is rubber. This is a metal thing, it's yeah. into the head. When you shoot it, it is, it's into the body. Look to this. Penetrates, goes right through. So this is the bullet thing. by hand, shoulder to shoulder, an Israeli and a Palestinian go to a demonstration in the occupied territories. Both of them are arrested at the same time by the same army officer and they are taken to the same police station in the occupied territories. But at the moment when they're already in the police station, then there are two different set of rules that apply to the Israeli and to the Palestinian, although they were both um, arrested for the same act at the same time by the same person. The Israelis have the Israeli 
civilian law that applies to them, and the Palestinians have the military law of the, occupy, of the occupier that applies to them. If you're an Israeli, you have to be taken in front of a judge after 24 hours of being detained in order to have a, a judicial review of the arrest. And if you're a Palestinian, four days. Regarding Palestinian children, even if we're talking about very, very young ones, the rule of detention is that they come and get them as if they were terrorists. And what do I mean? An army unit with masks and paint in their faces, with rifles and, 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 and shotguns, come to the village in the middle of the night, one, two o'clock at night. They open the door of the home. They make a fuss. They get all the family out, even if in a, you know in in a, in this kinds of society, a, a woman in, in their you know in their pajamas coming out where, where the soldiers have to see them and all the society, it is it is very difficult. Okay, sit down, please. I'm sitting. No, you're not sitting. Sit over there, please. Are you afraid? No, I don't afraid. Yeah. Okay, you sit down. You are please. afraid. I like order. You like order. Yeah. Okay, sit, please. You too. You can photograph from there. You know, you know what? No. Come with me. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see the house. This is my house, of course. Okay. Do you have something who is unforbidden? Unforbidden like yes. what? Like uh, knives. Like uh, I have a lot weapons. of knives. I have a lot of knives and the spoons and the okay. kitchen. In the kitchen it's okay. I also have uh, ones in the kitchen. You throw rocks. They get the child that they are looking for at that point without even showing a warrant because they don't have warrants. Nobody. 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 You? Where have you been? Here in the house? In the house. Okay. You saw yeah. that we are so uh, wake him up from the yeah, no? okay, yeah. okay everybody good night thank you and this happens all the time it happens all the time the most common <coughs> charge is stone throwing stone throwing is seen as a security offense even if the stones were thrown at the wall not at soldiers even when there was no possibility to hit an individual or to create any harm. And this is the most common charge against most of the children in the occupied territories. Is there a stated, a consciously stated goal, purpose for doing this to children? In, in other words, what do they want for this? Do, uh, what do they want? What do they want the result to be for doing this to children? Israel has not find, has not been able to find a, a solution to stop the nonviolent movement through guns, through through um, other violent means. Okay. Since it's very difficult to get to the leaders, they use the children through this means of interrogation in order to, to, incriminate. to incriminate the leaders. And once you have all the leaders behind bars, you have a, a movement, but with no shepherds. Israel has to take whatever actions it sees necessary to protect its security. Uh, and just as the United States uh, went uh, to Afghanistan, they went to Iraq, they went to Vietnam, they went to Korea um, and other places uh, to protect what it believed was its security, so too Israel has a right to protect its security, 100%. The security situation that we have to deal with here is very, very difficult. And if I put it very, very simply, 
I have friends that are alive today because they had a weapon, and I have friends that are dead today because they didn't have a weapon. Today, people can be issued and licensed because people who carry any kind of a weapon have to be licensed. They don't just hand out guns. We're not living in Texas. I, ha I know people in Texas that have arsenals. They have many, many more weapons than we have here. And the gun laws in Texas say that if you open your window and you see somebody stealing your car outside, you can shoot to kill, okay? Here, if you do that, they put you in jail. It's a God-given commandment. You're told that you have to protect yourself. I'm wondering if you could say something about what, what kind of commitment you have to your neighbors, to your non-Jewish neighbors. What kind of ethic, what, what are you obligated to do? In what way are you obligated to treat them? Um, as far as I'm concerned, there should be some kind of equality, okay? Um, obviously, the situation that we're dealing with today is abnormal, and, um, and as I've said, there is not equality, because today I'm not allowed to build, I'm not allowed to buy, Arabs aren't allowed to sell to me. It's definitely discrimination. Um, primarily against the Jews that live here, not against the Arabs that live here. I know that there's a lot of Jewish land that was taken over by the Arabs. Uh, when the British were here in the 1930s, the Arabs here took forged documents to the British and said, stamp them, which they did, and then all of a sudden turned into their land. So that today when we come back and say, well, you know, it belonged to us, they say no, and they see we have papers that the British stamped and it belongs to us. Um, land ownership is, is, a, uh, is a very, very difficult uh, issue, um, and, and that's why there are also courts. Palestinians mm -hmm. who believe that there is a way to break down these walls that you don't like and that they don't like mm -hmm. without violence. Mm -hmm. And I want to know, how can you meet these Palestinians who seem to say the same thing that you do. Ask them to give me a call. If you want, you can work as a bridge. Anybody can call me. I talk to anybody. Three months ago, I was in, near my center in Talbomeda, the place where I stay all the time. David Wilder came towards me and told me, do you see that flag? You will be hanged on the same place, and the birds will eat your, you will eat your body. Fortunately, I filmed that. I filmed him saying that. Many times he attacked me when he was filming, when we had farming days. And all time he's, he's traveling with his gun. Hebron is a military area. Wherever you go, you see soldiers. Wherever you go, you see watchtowers. Wherever you go, you see cameras. So it's very secure for them. We like to live. We like to stay equal. It's about, are we equal with them? The closure policy is that shops closed by military orders, that the army came to the shop owners and told him or her, you are not allowed to open your shop. If you open, you will be arrested, you will be punished. We have around 550 shops closed by military orders. Many other shops are allowed to open. But the road is closed. Mm. The end of the road here is closed. This market used to be the gold market. Uh. And Arab countries, all of our Arab countries, if you've been in Arab countries, the most beautiful market is the gold and jewelry market. Now it's a rubbish market for the settlers. The issue here is not the soldier that's standing in the checkpoint, the issue here is the checkpoint that we control four million people as a metaphor. Everyone or at least most of the people in, uh, in Israel um, goes to the army at the age of 18, 19 and we were sent by our society, by our families, by our friends and as soldiers that served you we now feel obligated to show and tell people the reality and the truth about the occupation. The shifts of soldiers here are pretty much 17 days here, go back for home, a few days to rest, and then again, six hours shift, six hours rest, six hours another shift. 
every single day. So after two months, even if you're the most leftist soldier, you stop caring. Not that you don't care about Palestinians, because after this time, um, I think every human being stops caring. The only thing he wants to do is make it over. Mapping of houses. Who lives where? How many people live in the houses? And there are two basic rules for it. The first one, you always do it at night. Why at night? Because at night you can assume that more, more people will be there. And night is not 8 p.m., night is 2 o'clock at night. And the second rule about it is that you always do it to people that are not related in any kind of way to terror. Ordinary people like you and me. If you soldiers starting to do a search in the house, that means opening closets, moving furniture, looking inside the, you know, the mattresses, the walls, searching for something. Most of the time you don't really know what to search for because you don't have any intelligence that indicates that you need to search for something because these are ordinary people. You want people to feel your presence. You want people to know that you are here. I'm glad that we have seen uh, what's going on here and, and it's very painful to me what I am seeing. When we are treated as non-humans, we are very tempted to strike out and to respond as non-humans. We've had many presentations that make very clear the pain and, and actually uh, the, what, what, what the, I don't want to call it dysfunction, but the, the pain that just emerges from uh, amongst people, the way they are not learning how to live together. It's become clear to us that the peace process, as it's being called right now, isn't really a peace process, mm -hmm. you know, in the sense that it's a process to lead to peace, but rather it's a process to continue the status quo. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, as this process continues and the type of structure and framework it's happening, the situation for Palestinians is getting worse, where discrimination is increasing, violence against Palestinians is increasing, and settlements are expanding. So we're asking for a new way forward, a new type of politics that uh, you know, takes into consideration the people and the people's needs and attempts to mobilize the people to achieve these political results instead of discussions that have been happening for 20 years now on, round, you know, on a round table without any achievements. I'm asking all the world why I live as a Palestinian, this life. And the woman, she's Israeli or Jewish and she came from, I don't, I don't know from where, she has all the facilities of life. She has the freedom. She moved freely in Palestine. I can't, I can't move freely in Palestine. It's normal. It's simple things. I want to move in my country, but I can't. The sea, it's not so far from here. It's just 40 minutes, but it's forbidden for me. We believe that no one should be forced to follow any laws, rules, or regulations unless they are part of a fair and democratic process that puts those laws, rules, and regulations in place. And that's what makes you know, the occupation wrong, is we're basically under military control. The occupation, uh, they, I think they, are, they suffered before they were occupied. Uh, so why do they want the other people to suffer the same thing they were suffering from, from other occupation or other countries? So I hope that they accept the justice and the real justice for, for all the people. No one should be humiliated. And when we say people deserve to live a dignified life, I think the best definition of that is uh, given in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights.